Cobal Banger Realty, Columbus, Ohio. Uh, so go Bucks. Hopefully you like us. If not, you probably hate us. Uh, but uh, definitely I'm happy to be here and I can't wait to uh, hopefully answer some of your questions. Yes, so Kristen's going to be monitoring the chat for me while I'm presenting. So if you have any questions, you can type them in the chat and at the end I will have a Q&A so you can pop off of mute and ask the questions. I am going to ask everybody to place themselves on mute just so there's no background noise so you can hear what I'm saying. Um, and I'm going to be sharing my screen. So Kristen, will you let me know when you can see my screen? In just one moment. Let me get it started. I see it. Awesome. All right, everyone. Well, happy Thursday. Today we are going to be learning all about Moxie Present. I'm sure everybody's heads have been spitting with this new Moxie rollout. Well, Kristen and I are here to hold your hands through Moxie Present and show you how easy it is to make a listing presentation. So the agenda for today is we're going to create a new presentation. I'm going to show you how you can customize it and share it with your clients. So I'm actually not going to use this PowerPoint because I feel like we can learn a little bit more hands on if I go live into Moxie and share my screen, but I wanted to lay out the groundwork of what we're going to be doing in this class. So let me pop over. So a couple things we know that um, where we can find Moxie is going to be on our mycbdesk.com. We're going to look for that Moxie works tile and you're going to click into that. This is going to load and I know a lot of agents are a little confused when this loads. It looks like you're on your profile. Well, just so you know, up here at the top is how you get into all of our Moxie programs. So there's four programs within our Moxie suite now. The one that we're going to be concentrating on is present. There is also engage your website and impress. There's other classes on Sales Pro that you can take to learn each and every one of these, but for our training, we're going to focus on present. So we're going to click into present and it's going to drop you into your library. So if you've never been into present, you're probably not going to have a library like I do. It's probably going to look blank. That's OK. I'm going to show you how to do a presentation from start to finish. So hopefully you'll have one on your screen. So how we're going to start is we're going to click on this create new button at the top right hand corner. And it's going to ask us what type of presentation we want to select. So I'm actually going to minimize this and put, so you can see the entire screen. There we go. So for the sake of this training, I'm going to pretend that we are going to a potential seller. We're going to do a CMA with this presentation. You're going to be presenting the seller with our beautiful listing concierge program, and you're going to win the listing. And I'm going to show you how. But I also wanted to show you there are other options here. So you have a property review, which is going to be pages for all of them. This one's going to be more approved. If you could put yourself on mute, that would be awesome. Thank you so much. OK, so there's property review, which is going to be focusing really heavily on a CMA. There's another class that we offer, which is called an appraiser package, and that's what we use that property review for. There's a buyer tour, which is great. You can actually um, lay out all of the uh, properties that you're going to tour with your buyers. They're coming in from out of town. You have a buyer one with a CMA on a potential property. And then you have a non listing presentation. So we like to talk about those being maybe you go on a family trip and you put all of your pictures into this non listing presentation, but it's still branded to you and then you send it out to your family so they remember, hey, they're a realtor. I want to sell with them. I know that a lot of times us as agents, we we walk around and we feel like we, we tell everybody till we're blue in the face that we're agents, but who's the first people to forget? our family. So that's a great way to keep in front of your family to tell them that they can actually go in there and use you as an agent. So for the sake of this training, I'm going to click on seller and I'm going to hit continue. So it's going to drop you into here. I need to drop down and get my Caldwell Banker templates. So if I click into there, it's going to give me a ton of templates for all of the different regions. But since I'm in Florida, 
I'm going to come in here and I'm going to check my Northwest Florida. So this is when you're going to have to really think about when you're going to this listing, what listing concierge package you're going to want to put on this property. So for the sake of this training, I am going to use the gold package. The gold package is one of my favorite packages. So that is what I'm going to choose. But you will know when you're going to the property, which package is going to be appropriate for that particular listing because you've already done your due diligence. Then I'm going to hit continue. And then I'm going to prepare it for somebody. So let's just pretend this um, amazing uh, family is called the Smith family. So let me type in the Smiths. And then I'm going to have to pick out which MLS I am a part of. And again, I'm in Pensacola, Florida, so I'm going to choose Pensacola and I'm going to hit create. It's going to sit here for a minute. Just so you know, it's working in the background. It's making your presentation. It does take a minute and then it's going to drop you into the first step to the presentation. Just a little groundwork, just a little lay of the land to this little uh, first page. Just so you know, these are the steps that we need to take to get to our end goal, which is our pages. So you can actually toggle back and forth. So if you go forward and you need to go back, you can use this as your guide to go back. So just so you know, these are clickable links. So if you accidentally get all the way to pages and want to go back to search, you can. This is your um, your friend. So keep keep this in mind. So we have this prepared for the Smiths. And what we can do, the subject property, we can either enter it in manually. So if we had Mr. and Mrs. Smith's address, we could just put that in here and it asks for a plethora of information. So it asks for obviously school district, um, it asks for bedrooms, baths, square feet. You might not have all this information and that's okay, right? We don't need every single piece of information, but the more information you have, the better. For the sake of this training, I am going to use a listing that was in the MLS. So I have an old MLS number. So I'm going to type that in right here. And once I do that, I can hit this copy button. And if the property was ever in the MLS, it's going to pop up. You see that this property was in the MLS. You're seeing a picture right here to my right. And if I scroll down, it has all that information pre-populated out for me. A couple things you're going to want to make sure that everything in here is correct. This could have been a listing that was 10 years ago in the MLS, right? So you're going to want to come in here, make sure that the these features are the same. If you don't know, maybe the floors are different. Maybe they're not hardwood and tile anymore. You don't know. So maybe you delete that out. The other thing that's imperative that you come in here and check is this description. Sometimes it pulls in funky things like don't forget to not let the cat out. Um, we want to make sure that you take that out um, and maybe reword this a little bit. This isn't your words. It's coming from the MLS. You might want to take some of this out and just put your remarks in here. So this is customizable. You can delete it. You can add to it or you can change it. Another thing I want to make a mention of um, is this photo right here. So this is pulling from the MLS and we know we did not list this property 10 years ago. So this is not my photo. So two things, I cannot use this photo. So I can either upload a new image, maybe I drove by the subject property and I snapped a photo on my phone. I can upload a different photo that I own or I can always click this button replace with default image. So basically what that does is it's just a generic pretty um, picture of a couch and a pillow and that just keeps you in compliance. But what I always tell my agent, another little touch that is amazing that you can do just to impress the, the potential seller, go out there and take a picture. You wanna see what that property looks like, what condition it's in. You're the expert. So I would go out there and I would snap a quick photo and drop it in and it impresses them. So you can always come right here and hit that browse and go into your photos and upload it. So that's how you would make a different one. So you want to make sure everything in here is correct. It gives you a Google map. So if for some reason that does not look like the subject property, we might have the wrong MLS number. Again, we can enter it manually if we need to. So what you, once you've got all your information put in here perfectly, you're going to scroll all the way down and you can see this listing was last sold 
for the list price of two sixty nine 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 zero. And uh, well, that was the list price and this is what it was sold for. It was only one day on the market and it sold 6-10-2020. So it's giving you the information of when it was last sold. You can keep that in there or you can remove it totally up to you. So I'm going to hit that continue button. Again, if I needed to go back, if I thought I had made a mistake, I can always click this subject property to go back to exactly where I was. So now is where the fun part begins. This is where I'm going to run a CMA and y'all are the expert. You are the realtors, you are the experts. So this is where your expertise comes into play. So you're gonna come through here and you're gonna filter the comps in the area that you believe will best suit your case for a price. So there's a couple ways you can do this. The first way is you can come over here and draw on the map. So if you wanna stay in a specific maybe subdivision, I can use my draw tool and do a quick draw. So maybe I only want to stick in this area. I don't want anything above this area. I just want this radius. It's going to bring all the properties in that are in my area. So that's one way we can filter. Another way is we can use our radius tool. So instead, maybe we build a radius and say we just want to go that far out. And then it's going to come in here and it's going to populate this. If it loads for me. There we go. Run search. There we go. Being a little slow for me. OK, so maybe I choose the radius instead because it's giving me some more comps. I didn't have as many with my draw tool. The other way we can go in here and do a filter is up here with the price tool. You can put a minimum to a maximum, so you could do a minimum price of let's just say 225 to a max of 325. So that's going to sort out all the properties in that price range that I really want to do for my comps. Another way to filter is by bedroom and bath. So my subject property has um, three bedrooms, so I might want to stick with the three bedrooms only or two baths, um, but you have the ability to filter it here. And then we do have the Mac Daddy filter, as I call it. In here, you can actually change it where the property info is. So you can talk about the year built. Um, you can talk about if there's any views, if it's on, got a pool. Um, there's a ton of different filters that you can come in here. You can also change how long it's been on the MLS. So you can change it up to instead of 10 days, let's do 30 days. Um, we maybe only want solds. We don't want pendings. We can change that. Um, we don't want off market. Uh, we don't want any contingent, right? So we can come in here and uncheck all of them and apply our filters. So now I've got four properties, it looks like, that are in my filtered price range. Again, you are going to want to go in here and make sure that it meets your filter. And every time you change the filter, it's going to keep, you're seeing it, it's keep live loading. This, this is great about the Moxie. It's connected to the MLS and it's awesome. It's changing with you as things are happening. So you could run a report today and see these comps. And then tomorrow I could run it and see another one is on there because it's sold. So it's actively pulling from the MLS real time. So that is great to remember that this is this is live. This is this is something that you can come and run today. Maybe you have a listing appointment on Friday, you run the comps um, or next Friday, you run it today and then you go back on Thursday. Um, so this would be a great way to do it. All right, so let's choose some subject properties. So I'm going to choose my, um, this one looks pretty good to me, this one. So you can just check them on and off to add them to your presentation. So you can either include all or exclude all, but I'm going to check them on because these all look good to me. And then at the top here, if I scroll back up, you can see now mine changed to four listings. Let's just pretend maybe I don't want this 259 one. Then it changes it to the three. So you can see it's a live report, it's saving, it's it's going as you go. 
but that's how you would come and you would filter it. So once you have your comps exactly the way that you want them, you've filtered, you, you, you have a bunch of them that you really like, you think these are gonna be great for the price um, and you're ready to go, you can come down here and hit that continue button. So when you hit that continue button, it's going to bring you to the subject property right here. And then the three listings that we chose. So here are my listings that I chose for our comps. If I wanted to go back and I wanted to add more listings, I could. So let's just pretend I come to this page and I'm really not liking my listing summary. Maybe I want to add a custom listing. Maybe there was a listing from the MLS that is not pulling up here actively. I could come in here and I can add a custom listing. So if I add that custom listing and I click that button, it's going to take me to a page it loads let's see here right here where I can add a custom listing for the MLS so you'll come in here and add that data to use as a comp so if you're not seeing it pulling up in the MLS you can always customly add a um, another property for your CMA so let's go back to my estimate page again um, or my listing page, I'm sorry, because that's where I was just at where I added my custom listing. I can also view the listings on the map to make sure they're in the same proximity as my listing. Maybe I got a little funky with my draw tool and think I went a little too far. I can kind of see where it's placed to kind of gauge. So it gives me those options on this um, listing summary page. It also gives you all of um, the averages of the homes. Oh, it's scrolling down for me. So you've got your all, your average for all of them, your high price point, the sold, the average and the high. And then you've got my subject property. And you can see I have a listing in here, number two, that's a three, three, and mine is a four bedroom. So I might wanna address that and go in there and change that depending. I can also come in here and add adjustments. So if I know that 5497 Tucker Circle had a new roof put on, I can put a remark in here and says, say brand new roof. And I can either minus an adjustment or add an adjustment. You guys are the experts. This is something that us marketing do not understand the way that you do, but you can come in here and add a price adjustment. So you could put in new roof and we could add you know, five to ten thousand dollars in um, equity for that. Same thing with the pool, or maybe there was damage. Maybe we had a storm here in Florida, and we knew that there was damage, and we need to remove some. So that's how you would come in here and add an adjustment. The other thing that you can do is you can come in here and edit the remarks from the MLS. So these are pulling from MLS. So if I click this edit remark, we might want to make sure that there's nothing funky in here. So we can come in here and edit all these remarks as well. We can also see the listing details. So it pulls up this listing. It also has a slideshow with all of the photos. So I could take a peek through them just to make sure that this is exactly the comp that I want to use. Um, and look at this and look at it on the map. So there's a lot of different ways that you can come in here and make sure that this is the exact comp that you wanna use in your listing presentation. I think one of the most important things here is adding that custom listing. And that one I, I do get asked a lot from agents, how do I add my own comp? Uh, maybe you've already run a CMA through the MLS and there's ones that are just not pulling for some reason uh, or another, or it's just a comp that you wanna use because you know best that's how you can come in and add a custom listing you can sort your order by price high to low or distance so you have a lot of sorting fil filters here and then once you've completed this and you've decided you can see i, I had that custom search i didn't finish so i might want to exit out of this one just because i did not finish and it's going to throw off my comps so i can just come right here to this red x and remove Bum, bum, bum. Awesome. So I removed that. Again, how do we add an adjustment right here by adding an adjustment? And how do we add a custom listing? We come up here to custom listing. All right, we're almost done. It's pretty simple. The next step is we're going to hit continue. And it's going to bring us to our estimate. So based on the average of all the properties, that were on that previous page, this is my estimate. 
um, for comparable properties. Then we have a range that we can actually create here, or we can take this off completely. Maybe you haven't seen the inside of the property and you want to wait until you present to really give them a price, or you can hit that create range and do a range with a percentage. So maybe we want to be within 3% of that range and hit apply, it's gonna give us this range for our property. So it's totally up to you. It's gonna be an agent by agent basis. Y'all are the best, again, you, you know your business, you know how to do CMAs, um, but this is gonna just be a great way to help you with the price. So I, there are some agents I know that will not put a price on a CMA, and there's some that, you know, maybe you've already been in the property and you're going back. It totally depends on you and the situation. So you can clear the range. Um, or you could say maybe this is the price you want to go with and put your remarks in here. So you can defend the reasons why you believe that the property is worth this um, value. Go in there and write your remarks. Um, you're the expert, so go in there and tell them the why. And then again, it shows you that listing summary again on the left hand side. So you can make your most educated decision. So I'm going to go back to my range because I really liked my range. I want to be within 3%. And I'm going to click that. So now that I'm happy with this page, <clears throat> I'm going to hit continue. Now comes the fun part. So we have a presentation almost almost ready to go. We do need to add some pages to this presentation and I'm going to show you why. But you can see on the left hand side here, I have all of my slides. Each slide is customizable and movable. So if I didn't want my agent profile at the top and I wanted to bring it down to the bottom, I can click and drag these around. You can see I'm in Florida, so it's pulling in all of the Florida stats that we have. So it's showing Cobble Banker is number one in Miami-Dade. I might want to exit out of that because I'm in Pensacola. Miami's very far from me, so I can actually remove this slide. But first, before we come in here and really kind of customize each slide, we need to add those CMA pages that we just created because I'm not seeing them here. I'm only seeing my listing concierge, so I need to come and hit add page. <clears throat> so there's two types of pages that you can add. You can add from our library or you can create a new custom page and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but let's click add from library. So when I add from library, there's pages sitting here that I can see I need. I need the property summary page. So I'm gonna click and add that to my presentation. I also would like the listing location map. So I'm going to click that one. I need the listing overview. I also would like the side-by-side -side comparisons. I would like the status, status comparisons. You can get the gist here. There's pages that you're going to want and not want. If you click on them, they will show you what the page is. You can see so you can look at them before you add them. So I'm going to add that one. I also want the price and days on market. Right, you can see how this can get really bulky presentation. So it's really going to depend on your potential seller. How green are they? How much information do they want? So you can you can give them a ton of information or you can give them a little information. So you're going to want to do this um, based on your potential seller. So I'm going to hit the add price and size. I want the pricing analysis. I do not want the purchase costs or the net proceeds. I do not feel like those are important right now for my CMA, so I'm going to leave those out. There are also other Cobble Banker pages in here that you can come into and click. So if you were looking for a specific one for your area and you weren't seeing it, you can come in here to our library and you can add them here. So there's tons and tons of pages in here. So I just wanted to show you, you do have that ability too. To go back to my presentation, again, I can click on my little pages tool. I now have 26 pages in my presentation. So if I come here, here we go. So we've got to the Smiths, this is gonna be my cover page. If I go to my agent profile, one of the things that I want to remind you guys is to complete your profile on desk. I will show you how to do that after this training, but it's going to pull in information from your profile. 
because you can have your bio in here, your picture. Obviously, I'm using the Florida training, so we don't have a picture, but your picture should be pulling through here, your email, your phone number, your website, um, and your bio. So just make sure you have that completed. I'll show you how to do that at the end if we have some time. So then I'm going to just come through here and look at my slides. I'm going to make sure that all of these I want in my presentation and maybe I need to move them around, right? I do like the fact that the agent profile is the first thing because it's a great conversation to have about your experience, who you are as an agent when you're sitting down in your presentation. And then I love the fact that we have a slide that's talking about how we're number one in million dollar sales in Florida. I think that's just great metrics to have that CV brand behind you. I'm going to come down to this Northwest Florida one and I'm going to move it up here because how I want my presentation to flow is going to be my profile, maybe talking a little bit about CB. And then, you know, maybe I don't want to go into the property itself yet. Maybe I want to go into my marketing plan because I remember I clicked on the gold package for listing concierge. So maybe I want to move this up. So I'm just going to drag these up. And I'm going to talk through my listing concierge first before I go into the actual listing is I'm going to tell them this is what I'm going to do for you. This is my marketing plan I have for this home and then I'm going to go into my CMA. So you would move all of those up as you can see with the listing concierge. It goes into each of the marketing plans. So if I click on this marketing package that I chose, which is gold, you can sit here and talk to your potential seller about that listing concierge package. So it shows you what that package includes, and then it has a slide on each of the elements that are in that package. So it's going to talk about first, I'm going to order that professional photographer. We're going to take beautiful pictures. It's going to have a single property website. You're going to we're going to blast out an e flyer. It's going to be in print advertising. We're going to have TV and online promotion. We're going to have property brochures, right? So you can really talk through each of these uh, marketing pieces. And this is really going to help you win the listing. If you're if you're unconfident, you know, maybe you're going up to up against multiple people that are fighting for this listing. This is going to set yourself apart. That's why we love listing concierge. It's it's to brand yourself, but it's also to get that that listing appointment and get that signed agreement. So let's look at the ones that we added in, which was the listing overview. So it's going to have this um, one that we have right here, the sold comparable number three, as well as the other two comparables we brought in. So as you can see, these are live links. Obviously, if we're printing this, we're not going to have live links, so you're not going to be able to click on it. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute because we're looking at it on the web view. If I toggle to the print view, you can see what it's going to look like versus what it looks like in the web view. So the web view, you can kind of click it. So it just depends if you're bringing this with you to a listing appointment, or if you're sending it to your potential seller, you're going to want to cater how it looks depending upon. So let's toggle back to that web view just because I want to show you some of the slides that come here. You've got your side by side comparison. Again, these are all live links so they can click into them. And it will open them up, which is super nice. And remember what I told you that it's connected to the MLS, so that means that it's constantly changing, so it's going to be updating in the background. So if you send this to a potential seller on Friday of next week and something changes, maybe you had a pending in here instead of a sold, it might have gone to sold. So it's going to change with um, as the MLS changes, so that's good to think of when you have these in here. You can also edit the slides by coming in here and hit that pencil button. So maybe in this comparable features slide that I was in, maybe I don't want all of these. Maybe I don't want um, bathroom details. That's a pretty important one. Probably shouldn't. Oh, well, bathroom details is not. I guess bedrooms and bathrooms are. Um, maybe you're built. I don't want. Or maybe I want to come in here and I want to add things. So you can actually come in here and customize these slides, add what you would like or take out. So if I close out of this, that is a way to edit it. Oh no, I'm got I'm okay, making sure it's loading. Okay, there we go. Um, then you have your status comparisons here. So let's look at what this one looks like in a print view. So it's going to look a little similar. So it looks pretty similar. Obviously, the links are not um, going to work. Let's look at that side by side comparison just so you can kind of get a feel of what it looks like in print versus in the web view. 
All right, awesome. So a couple more things I want to show you. Once you kind of have the ones you want to go through each one of these, you can toggle back and forth depending upon if you're going to print it or if you're going to send it to them as a link. You can come back and forth, but once you have your presentation um, the way you like it, there's a couple things we can do. Number one, we can come in here and add a page. Maybe you have a personal video. Maybe you have a video in YouTube that talks about you or um, who you are as an agent. Um, in my Metro up here, we had a lot of agents that did a spotlight video with our vendor, our title vendor, and it talks about them and their experience. And what better way to showcase you than a video? You can actually add videos, pictures to your um, presentation. So let me show you how. Instead of adding from that library, we're going to hit create new. So we can either upload a PDF, and I'll tell you in a second why we would want a PDF, but we're actually gonna use the build page to come in here and add a custom page. So you can see it's saying version, the web view or the print view. So if you're gonna do a video, then we would probably wanna just um, do the web view because the video is not gonna show up in a print view. Um, but if you were doing pictures, you could use the print portrait. So for the sake of this, I wanna show you how to add a video. So I'm gonna stay in that web view. And maybe I wanna do this two by two right here. So I'm gonna hit create. And it's gonna bring me here where I have a couple options. I can either add a text box. So if I click on the text, it allows me to drop in text. I can come in here and, you know, maybe talk a little bit about myself. Um, I can add an image so I can actually get an image from my computer and add it in here. So maybe I wanted to add um, images of the home that I had taken. Maybe I took a couple pictures when I was there and I just wanted to add them. This one really comes into play. Um, I mentioned this a little bit previously when we were talking. We do a appraisers package here. where We, we teach you how to use Moxie to kind of give to the appraiser. We're not trying, we're, we're following all rest spell. We're not trying to influence them, but we can add images here. So for instance, if there was like a water heater that was replaced or there was a pool that was added, Obviously, the appraiser is going to see that when they come to do the appraisal, but you can actually give them this presentation just so they have it all in front of you. And really, the point of that was in the time we were in where we were seeing appraisals go for long periods of time was to move yours to the front of the stack. So that's a great class. Um, if you if you want to sign up for that, it should be on your education department. But we're going to do a video, so I'm going to click on this video and I'm going to need a URL. So you can see you can only add a video from YouTube, Venmo and Daily Motion. So I'm going to go over here and I'm actually going to go over to my YouTube channel. At home in Northwest Florida, and I'm going to grab a video to drop in this presentation for you guys, just so you can kind of see what it looks like. So if I come down here, I'm going to need that share button. And I'm going to copy this link. So that's been copied. I'm going to toggle back to my presentation and I'm going to paste and click add. Now I have my beautiful uh, video here in my presentation. So let's just pretend this was my um, welcome or intro video, um, you know, telling my potential sellers about me. Then maybe I want to write a text over here or maybe I just want to come in here and, you know, add different types of things. There's lots of capabilities here in Moxie that you can actually really edit this and add exactly what you want. So for the sake of this, I'm just going to add some bullet points about myself, right? So Brittany Moulton and then so forth, so forth, so forth. And once I have this slide exactly how I want, I can leave it. I can also add something up here so I could add text. Maybe I want to put uh, my personal video. And this is good to go and I'm ready to go. I'm going to click this save button. Once I save, it's going to ask me for the name and the description of the slide. So this is for this. This is my personal video, so I'm just going to name it personal video. Personal video. And do we want to save it to my pages? I'm going to go ahead and say save. So now it should be saved to my presentation, so I'm going to give it a minute. And I'm going to exit out of here and I'm going to go back to my pages and I'm going to see if my personal video slide is now there, which I see it. It is here. 
So it's got my personal video. It's got the video I dropped in and it would have my bullet points here. So it's pretty customizable. That's what's great about Moxie. So you, you don't have just a one, one template where you have to work off of. You can really make it your own. And once you've gone in and you've made a presentation like this, you can actually save it as a template. So if you scroll all the way down through all of your different ones that you have, you can save it as a template. So you could come in here and build out a really great presentation. Maybe you pull in some um, data. That's how you would, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute, but maybe you have some data in here about the area. You've got your video. Maybe you always use Listing Concierge Gold. You can save this as a template in your Moxie, so you can just work off of this every single time. So you're not reinventing the wheel. And that way, all you have to do to go to a listing appointment, if you get a phone call in the morning, is come in here and do that CMA, and you're ready to go. You have one to either send before you go. You could take your iPad and walk through it with them on your iPad, or you could print it out and bind it. A lot of our agents love to print it out and have something tangible to hold. So that would be a great way to do it too. So if I come back up here, let me show you how or why you would want a PDF. So if we hit that add page and we hit create new, the other option we have is PDF. So we could actually pull in some of our other marketing tools that we have available on desk. For instance, we could pull in a prospect square report. Maybe where we're talking about a specific neighborhood, so we could pull in some neighborhood data and we can upload that here to our Moxie presentation. We could also pull in MarketQuest V2 and pull in some really great information there. Like maybe we wanted to do a neighborhood snapshot. We could come in here and we could upload that to the pages so we know exactly what we're looking at for this neighborhood. There's a lot of different things that you can do in Moxie to customize these presentations. But what I love most is the fact that you have the capability of adding it as a template so that once you've created one, you're not reinventing the wheel. So that is our presentation. So again, remember that you can move these, you can delete them. I have a total of 27 pages in my presentation. Maybe I feel like that's a little too much. I can come in here and I can remove some. Um, or maybe we have someone that is very analytical. We are going to need to add that prospect square PDF and we're going to need to add that. Another thing that we do in our appraisers package is that we add some of the different contracts that the appraiser is going to need just so they have them in this package. So that's another reason why you would need the PDF tool. You can also pull in stuff from BrandServe. So if you wanted to add maybe some more bragging or maybe you have client testimonials that you want to add in here of why they use you and how you've sold their home in X amount of days, you can actually pull that into the presentation as well. So that is Moxie Present. Let me show you how we can send it and print it because that's going to be our last step here. You can view it. So if we want to view it in the web, let's view it in the web. It is going to take a minute to load. And then all you would need to do was share this link. And then if we scroll down, this is what our presentation is going to look like. Obviously, again, this would be your profile. It's got all of our slides that we worked through. And we decided we wanted. Talks about our subject property. So you can see my presentation is beautiful and perfect. So that's how we would send it to somebody. We would just take that link and send it. The other thing we can do is we can view it in the print portrait. So you can see what it would look like if we were to print it out. It's going to generate a PDF. Just take a minute, depending on how many pages you have, it might take a little bit to load. So let's give it a second to complete so you can see what that looks like. And then all you would need to do is save this to your computer and print it at your office or at your home office, wherever you do your printing. So once this is complete, I should be able to download it. Give it a second. Apologies. I'm in an office, so normally I have better Wi-Fi, but you know, there's lots of agents doing really important things in here, so it could be that too. All right, so here is my PDF. It is still loading. Oh, goodness. You can see the more pages you have, the slower it is going to be to load, um, but that is OK. It's going to be beautiful. Let's see. Sorry, guys, this is 
This is being way slower than it normally does. We need some like Jeopardy music. OK, here we go. So here is my PDF. So it is ready for me to download or ready for me to print. So I can look through here and just make sure that everything is 100% correct. And I can go and I can print this and I can heat bind it. So it's almost a booklet. And it's got all of my beautiful slides that I customized and made in my presentation. So two ways to do it, you can either send it to them or you can go over there. You can you can just send it right here if you'd like. You can send the presentation is a virtual link um, or you can send it as a PDF. You can put the subject in the two. You can put their email right here and email it right here. Um, and then you can add your subject and message. So a couple ways to do it. Um, and then <clears throat> over here on more, you can actually create a quick flyer. You can view your quick flyer here. You can assign it to a co-presenter or an agent. So if you're on a team or you have somebody that has access to your Moxie, if you wanted to send it to them to do some work on it, you could do that here too, which is pretty awesome. And then in your settings here, you could come in here and um, change the prepared for and then the office to be displayed. Obviously mine is the marketing for Florida, but you've got some um, settings as well. But that is our Moxie present. Um, and I'm gonna stop sharing my screen, look to see if there's anything that I'm sure there's tons of questions, but Kristen's probably done a great job. And then I can also show you your desk profile of where you can edit everything too. So let me stop sharing my screen, see if anyone had any questions. We have a lot of questions um, okay. and I think I answered most of them. One was apparently at some point you went to add pages and she said she saw like 400 pages, but I think that was available. I don't think your, your presentation would still be loading if you had 400 pages in it. Um, so <laughs> it says yes. you had 26 pages. Um, so I think it's when you go to add custom, not custom pages, but brokerage pages, um, you had that many options. I have right. a couple of questions. Course, we're going to yeah, have cool. more because we're marketing and they're going to be a lot of different templates like recruiting. We help with managers. So there's probably a lot more in my toolkit that you might not be able to see. Yeah, I even see other cities pages and stuff like that. So, yes, we're going to have a lot more. Um, one had, uh, when you were sharing, um, how to pull comps and there was like, he wants three plus, uh -huh. I think, um, he wanted like three plus, I suggested leaving like max empty, but that pulls way too many options. So then I suggested putting like max, like three to five or something like that. Um, but, um, he, I also suggested he leave feedback for Moxie to get that changed. And there is a link in the chat guys for you guys to leave any feedback you guys have. Moxie is really taking a lot of our feedback and making changes. Um, so if there's something that you're like, I think it would work better like this, feel free to use that link um, and, and send them your feedback. Um, one said a slide from um, MA is dated to 2017. And I would encourage no, any I of you, if you, <clears throat> I'm sorry. A CMA, uh, a, a present 101. I can forward you the. You can it's about to be done. Me. Start at like 8 a.m. There we go. Um, so one thing I would suggest is if you guys come across any slides that you're kind of wondering about, please reach out to your marketing team. Like we will, your local marketing person that you would talk to because we will help make sure that those get updated. But other yes. than that, I think we got the majority of them. Um, I seen answered. one that came in and said, how do I save a presentation for a customer compared to saving as a template? That's a really good question and I did not touch on that. So once you've created a presentation, if you go back to your present homepage, it's always gonna live there. So it's already already saved for you. So it should be on your homepage. When I first opened my homepage, you saw I had a ton of uh, different you know, ones that I've done. So once you've started one, it's going to automatically save. It's constantly saving. So you can always go back in there and edit. So if you only have 10 minutes to work on the presentation today and need to go back to it tomorrow, you can go back in and it'll save, be saved on your Moxie desk. That's a great, great question. 
Um, OK, the other thing I wanted to touch on really, really quick before I let you all go is that profile on desk. So all of your information that you need for Moxie is actually filtering through your desk profile. So let me show you what I mean when I say that. I also linked my YouTube in the chat, but all of my previous classes are here. You can always come look at it, and this class will be dropped into this YouTube channel too, and it should be available by end of day today. So it's in the chat. Take a look at that. Um, so for your profile for Moxie, it's actually right up here at the top right hand corner of desk, and you're going to click on my profile. That's where your um, everything's going to feed in like your bio, all your information. So make sure you've come in here and you've completed this. This is also going to help you with any of our other Moxie tools that we have. So for engage your website and impress. It's all feeding from this desk profile. So make sure you go in there and you complete that profile. If you haven't already, it's really, really important. How can you remove the license for information on the presentation? It should be editable on that specific page. I know there is some states that require licenses to be seen. Florida does not. So if it's on there, it could be because it's a requirement. If not, you should be able to edit it out. Hopefully that helps. Let me stop sharing my screen and come back. Thank you for all the info. Awesome. Well, Kristen and I will stick around for a little bit. If anyone has any questions and maybe they're a little stage fright and they don't want to come off mute with all the people, um, please stay on and we'd be happy to help. I'm going to stop the recording um, at this point so I can get that recording on my YouTube channel.